Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, it's me Lizzy Lily and today's video is which Sims 4 game packs should you buy. So today's video is going to follow on from my which Sims 4 expansion pack should you buy video, that is in the description box below, you can check that out. Also it's set out in the same format, so if you're looking at a particular game pack for you to finish your collection, then please use the timeline at the bottom of the video or check in the description box below for the timestamp as I've set up chapters for you to access whichever pack you want to know most about. If you're new to my channel, I do put two videos up here on a Tuesday and a Thursday. I also stream over on Twitch three times a week. I stream mostly The Sims 3 content, so if that's something you'd like, please do come and hang out. It's twitch.tv slash lizzylily, and my username is the same across all social media. So give me a follow if you want to keep up to date with what's going on. And if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up if you do enjoy it. And let me know in the comments below which pack you're adding to your collection. I'm going to start working through chronologically with all of the game packs except the most recent one as I personally feel like it was a massive cash grab. I'm not going to talk anymore about it. Bat who? Never heard of it. So we're going to move swiftly on from that one. We will kick it off then with Outdoor Retreat. The theme is very much camping. That's the main activity that came with this pack. The creator sim has lots of outfits for camping, lots of um, kind of outdoorsy style outfits, kind of things you'd go hiking in, quite relaxing, casual, no real formal wear or sleep wear or anything like that. And there's a couple of new hairs and things. We had a new aspiration, the Outdoor Enthusiast aspiration and the squeamish trait came with that, uh, which was quite cool to see new parts of the game being kind of enhanced. So if you're a bit sick of your current aspirations, you want something a little bit fresher, this one does come with a new aspiration that can talk you through the gameplay of Outdoor Retreat. The new world that came with this was a vacation world, so that's Granite Falls. It's a beautiful world to look at. There's not a lot to it, very similar to all Sims 4 worlds. It's more look but don't touch but the waterfall is active in that you can go fishing in the bottom of it. I personally think it would be great if we could go swimming in the lake, but as this was the first game pack, I'm not going to deduct points for that. Another skill that was new to the game as well was the herbalism. I really like the vibe of this pack, the log cabin, build and buy items, the rustic theme, the outdoorsy theme, and there are a couple of activities in there that I think are quite quaint and quite nice. Ultimately, I don't use it that much at all. I don't take my Sims on vacation very often, and it's not something that I'm that interested in. So I think this is a pack I did get on sale because I, I wasn't having it otherwise. Uh, but yeah, I recommend it if you want something new to do with your Sims that isn't going to be an overload. It's not as heavy as an expansion that's going to completely override your game, but it is a nice little add-on that you can do. And you can bring it home with you as well. You can build a log cabin in your own world. You can kind of take on that rustic vibe at home. If you're a family game player, there's some nice aspects to it as well. What is worth noting as well is that with the latest patch update, you can now vacation to any world. So whilst Granite Falls was the first of its kind and was a whole new style of gameplay kind of going on holiday, that has been overwritten now. The next pack then is Spa Day. This is probably one of my favourites. This is probably one of my top game packs. Um, it came with a lot of new stuff. Um, again in terms of a new skill, the wellness skill, it didn't come with any new traits or aspirations so this game pack did not focus on personality as such uh, but the creator sim items are something I really really like, a lot of athleisure style, comfort styles, um, three new hairstyles for both masculine and feminine sims and I love the towel hairstyle uh, for children as well as adults that can colour coordinate with their like robe, their dressing gown, whatever you call it. And there are a couple of new watches as well. The main venue, um, the main aspect of this pack, the main selling point was the spa venue. So if you do install this pack, you will go into your gallery, into your library, and you'll have about four different spa venues that you can pick from or put them all down if you want to. Um, each one looks slightly different, but incorporates all the options. So foot and hand massage chairs, um, massage tables, saunas, um, all sorts of different things. Lots and lots of new gameplay in that and you all these items you put at home so the build and buy was really fleshed out. And also the wellness skill was the biggest bit of gameplay so you can build the wellness skill by doing things like yoga, meditation and um, going to the spa and things like that. There are yoga classes as well at one of the spa venues. So there's lots and lots to do with that. The style is very minimalist, very modern um, and yeah, I just think ultimately this game 
really enhances what you've already got. There's nothing too new to it, but it's new activities and things for your Sims to use at home. What I like most about this pack is probably from the wellness skill, if you do, I think it is if you get to a certain level of the wellness skill, the higher you get once you reach a certain level, they can reach kind of a zen point and they can teleport um, from where they're meditating to wherever they want to go. So that's a really cool aspect that just enhances that gameplay. Next then is The Sims 4 Dine Out. Now this pack was, I think, a really, really decent concept. I rate the theory behind it very highly. Um, it comes with basically three key points. The ability to go out to dinner, which was something new. Um, the ability to own and run a restaurant. And from that, there's new cooking opportunities, new recipes to learn. Um, if you attend restaurants enough, you'll learn the recipes when you're going. I love the Creator Sim. It's very smart, casual. Very much what you'd wear if you're going out for dinner or if you're running a restaurant or working in a restaurant. Those are the main points. Uh, there's not too much else for children. The gameplay, I think, is awesome. I think it's a really, really cool concept. I loved Sims 2 Open for Business. I loved having retail in The Sims 3. So bringing this idea back, um, there's a similar concept in Sims 3 store, the business as usual bistro. So again, bringing that in, it's something a lot of Sims players like is being able to run your own business and also Sims 1 hot date going way, way back, just being able to go off the lot and do things in this way. The only issue that I found really is that it doesn't run as smoothly as we would like it to. There's been a lot of discussion around um, difficult that like your Sims won't eat. They'll sit at the table and won't eat their meals. As you can kind of tell from the video I've done here, my Sims can't sit still. So Bella was getting up a lot, walking around, going and checking things out, coming back. When the food was served, um, it was served to the wrong side. So they had to switch sides to get the food that they'd ordered. Um, I loved little actions like praising the chef, sending your compliments to the chef, colouring in your placemat, ordering a drink at the bar, stuff like that was really cool. It was really filled out, so in terms of story progression, you could see Townie sat at the restaurant eating their dinner. Um, but the dinner itself did probably take about five hours. Like, I think we went out for dinner somewhere around 6pm and we were heading home at 11 um, because it had taken so long for the food to be prepared, for the food to come to us, for Bella to sit down. For them to eat it i did though um order coffee and dessert afterwards so you can pick from the menu pick whatever meals you like if you're running the uh, restaurant you can choose which food you're serving and who's cooking what um but when it came to dessert that was when bella decided to be up and about and moving around and i couldn't get them to sit down and share it together so the gameplay the routing the logistics of it was quite tricky for me some people have had it much worse some people have no complaints so it's definitely something to be aware of and be mindful of, but not necessarily something that's going to drastically affect your gameplay. But on paper, this is a really, really decent game pack that I thoroughly enjoyed. Up next, we have Vampires. Now, this is a pack that everybody raves about. I don't think there are many people who dislike Vampires as a pack. Um, for me, it's something that I really enjoy. If you watch my channel, if you watch my content, you will know that I love building and styling my sims in a gothic way so the vampires create a sim items so much gothic so much old kind of victorian style outfits and um, new makeup skin details to make your vampire look really real and really creepy four types of fangs so you've got a choice there um, and there's options for children adults masculine feminine whatever you want your sim to be there's something for them and I also really, really like with the feminine sims, there's some stockings that you can get. They've got patterns on, so skulls, crosses, um, all sorts of patterns in loads of different colours that just look really cool. The main aspect, obviously, of vampires is that your sim can become a vampire. Your sim um, can be bitten, can be turned into a vampire. You can create them and create a sim and really mess around with how they look. And they will have special powers, supernatural skill that you can build throughout your gameplay. Um, by doing things like compelling sims, by drinking from sims, hunting sims. You can have a dark form that you may use when they're drinking or hunting versus a human form. There are also three new aspirations for your vampire, um, a knowledge one, a family one, and a social one, a popularity one. You can escape to Forgotten Hollow, so this came with a whole new world. This was the first game pack to give you a new world to play in rather than a vacation world. 
Uh, Forgotten Hollow is very creepy, very eerie. Again, very Victorian Gothic build, so something I love. The build and buy from this pack is something I really treasure. I, I use it a lot. So again, my personal preference is one of my favourites just for that aspect, if anything else. Um, and there are a couple of new objects. So there's a new bassinet. If you have a baby vampire, they come in a new cute Victorian bassinet. And uh, there's gargoyles and all sorts of climbing ivy, coffins. You can really go to town on that Victorian build. And the pipe organ is also one of the newest um, gameplay items with a new build and things like that. The, the world itself has two families, three lots and an empty lot. So you can get building and playing with it too. So Parenthood Game Pack, I think it's a controversial one. I think it's one that on the face of it, everybody can agree is a good pack. It's a fine pack. Whether you sit on the Sims 3 generation side will probably skew your opinion. So I'm just going to put this disclaimer in there right now. Do not go into this pack thinking it's going to give you anything like Sims 3 generation. It won't. Sims 3 generations was a Sims 3 expansion pack, which means it was... 200% of a Sims 4 expansion pack, let alone a game pack. That's my personal opinion, but I feel like it is true. So Parenthood is good for what it is, and it's a good pack to enhance your family gameplay if that's what you enjoy. But please, you will only be disappointed if you go into it thinking it will match up every generation. The Create a Sim, there were new hairs and clothes for toddlers. I think this was the point as well, they started patching in, moving adult hairstyles down to children. Um, so it started to flesh that out a bit more and lots of new clothes and things for children and teens which i really liked one of the new things as well was an acne skin detail so you can give your sims um bad skin if they're going through that teenage phase which i thought was a nice little detail um and the general gist of the pack then is as it says in the title being a parent having new aspects to your children and their lives and guiding kind of guiding them through that so life values and traits was a huge concept here. Your sim children can develop these values and traits by behaving, misbehaving, how they interact with their parents, their siblings, their friends. Um, that will ultimately shape who they're going to be and the path they're going to go down in life, which I thought was a hugely important underlying feature, which really kind of amplifies the lack of gameplay we've had so far. Your sims can also get in trouble and your parents can develop the parenting skill to kind of manage this and also support their child generally um, maxing out the parenting skill is definitely something you will do if you're doing the 100 baby challenge it's quite easy to do if you just interact with your children quite regularly and the aspiration super parent was also a nice aspect of gameplay so the next pack i'm going to talk you through is jungle adventures so this is gearing towards the more recent of the pack so it's the third most recent fourth most recent game pack so i have played this through completely I ate it up. I think I got it towards the end of last year and I just loved it. It's the gameplay. I think this is possibly one of the best game packs for gameplay. The point of this pack then is to travel to Salvadorada and you can build the new archaeology skill and fulfill the new aspirations around that and having adventures in the jungle. It's a really interesting kind of take on that traveling that vacation kind of world it's all about trekking through the jungle taking on all the different creepy crawlies dangers and things that come along with it uh, your sim will build skills as they go along having skills already will help them make decisions on chance cards there's lots of different things to do and uh, there are temples which are the main goal so once they get to a temple they can run into skeletons they've got to solve puzzles to get through it and then ultimately they'll get some treasure so it's a really fully fleshed out thought through pack uh, which just gave me hours of gameplay if your sim doesn't want to be trekking through the jungle or um adventuring like that they can still embrace the culture there is a hidden Salvadorada culture skill that you can build by interacting with people who live there and um, picking up kind of local phrases, eating their food, learning their dances. So you can still engage with the community and pick up a whole host of new interactions without having to go through the jungle. Um, the archaeology skill is something I spent a long time on. So you basically can go into the jungle, start digging through, um, finding ruins and like that and then you take them back to the archaeology table shine them up repair them all of those kinds of things 
and you'll either find out it's a fake or it's a real one and there's a whole host of collections for you to finish with that so i spent a very long time on that i really really enjoyed it so i really rate this pack as something for you to look at and try out after jungle adventure came what i'm gonna say is probably my favorite game pack i know this is controversial i know a lot of people disagree with this it's a very much love or hate pack it will depend on your style of gameplay but strangerville is a pack that i oh i loved it i really really loved it and i will tell you exactly why so for those of you who haven't even thought of or seen strangerville the type of pack that strangerville is it is a story-led gameplay pack so if you think of things like sims castaway stories sims life stories pet stories from way back when or any kind of game where you have to follow through particular stages of story to get to the end of it that's what this is so strangerville has a mystery attached to it and i can still remember the promo now nobody knew what was going on we couldn't tell what was going to happen in this pack or what we were supposed to do but it is oh it was it's just it's what it is my favorite the point of the story is to figure out what is going on in Strangeville. So there's a new career as well, a military career. So this is the first pack to give us a new career. Um, we have new. The only aspiration was to get through the story. But what you'll find in Strangeville is people are starting to act quite strangely, and um, they're coming under the title of possessed. And um, we don't know why, we don't know how, but the military have started coming into Strangerville and there's lots of scientists around too. So your job is to figure out what on earth is going on and the game will lead you through that by doing the aspiration. Or you can just go rogue and do it yourself, but by investigating and speaking to people, you will find out that there is a secret lab in Strangerville and lots of weird plants that are popping up all over the place. And the more you get into the story, the more the plants seem to be developing and growing. So it's a very interesting mystery. I will give no more away. I will not spoil it for you, but it's just, I really enjoyed it. Obviously when it comes to these kind of things, once you've played it through once, how much else is there to do with the pack? That is a question for you to answer. But for me, I love the build and buy. So the build and buy again is Victorian, Victorian Gothic, and you also have some secret lab style stuff. So I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed building with that. and. Yeah, I just, I love this pack so much. <laughs> so the uh, final pack I'm going to talk through today then is Realm of Magic. Realm of Magic is, oh, it's up there. It's definitely a very well thought out pack. The point, as the name suggests, is to bring magic to your game. So if you're a fan of The Sims making magic, The Sims 3 Supernatural, all the supernaturals that popped up all over the place in The Sims 2, this is probably a good pack for you. Uh, the point of this is to become a spellcaster. So that is a supernatural type of sim, it's an occult sim that you can create or you can be turned into. The creator sim items are very gothic, so right up my alley. Chilling Adventures of Sabrina vibes going on, which just I lapped up. And very interesting face details and makeup if you create a spellcaster. We got a new world with this pack, Glimmerbrook, but that was not all. In Glimmerbrook, there is a portal to another realm. That realm is where the spellcaster live and practice their magic and learn how to practice and how to become a better spellcaster. At the top there are three types of magic and there's a mage for each one. So for each type of magic you can build your skills and you can track that in a journal within the um, symbology panel and essentially you can become a specific type of spellcaster and be seen as the mage, kind of the know-all of that type and you can guide young mages. So some Hogwarts inspiration if you did want some you could probably go down that alley and um, again there was a new bassinet as well for spellcaster baby the visuals the gameplay is just I find I just think it's gorgeous I think Glimmerbrook is stunning um, the families in Glimmerbrook are very kind of heartwarming Glimmerbrook is a small world I think there's only three lots so don't get your hopes up but there's nothing stopping you from adventuring further with the build style and with the gameplay style um, the new realm, the magical realm, is again quite small. It's very well done. The artistry of it is very colourful, very vibrant, and the pack itself um, just gives you all these different aspects of magic that haven't been done before. So you've got massive cauldrons you can do spells and creations with. Familiars were brought back, so you can go and buy familiars from shops and they will float around you. Um, follow you around you can do magic with your hands with a wand you can go on a broom and it's just 
I really love the look of this pack. I must say, I haven't played as a spellcaster very much, but I use the build by very often. It doesn't translate well into your average modern builds, but it is very magical, very pretty, and it's definitely one of my favourites. There's lots more to learn, and all of these packs I've talked you through today, I have merely scratched the surface, just to give you a taster and to show you a little bit of what you could be getting yourself into. So if you have enjoyed this video today, if you're thinking about buying a new game pack, if you're not sure which one to get, or maybe you would like to get the ones you're less interested in for cheaper, if you're a collector, then hopefully this video has helped you out. And if it has, please do give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments which packs you're getting next. If you are interested in my content, please don't forget to hit subscribe and hit the notifications bell. I am also currently doing a Sims 4 Snowy Escape Let's Play. The link is down below and will be at the end of this video. So if you've got this far, you can just click and get straight into it. That's pretty much it for me. I hope this helped. If you're not sure which stuff pack to buy, stick around this time next week and I'm doing the same thing all over again for each of the 17 stuff packs that came with the game. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again soon. Bye guys!